Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all here in this webinar session being conducted by TNB Academy. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today's webinar, Mr. Ashutosh Kumar Sena, with which Mr. Sena is here today. His awareness on clause 8.3, 9, and 10 of AS 9100D, the ISO standard for aerospace industry. Our distinguished speaker, Mr. Ashutosh Kumar Sena, has done his bachelor's in engineering in metallurgy stream. He is also a lead auditor in ISO 9001 and AS 9100 standard. Mr. Ashutosh Kumar Sena has audited several organizations for ISO 9001 and AS 9100 standards and has helped several others for their implementation. He has an industry experience of more than 38 plus years in the field of production, manufacturing, quality control and quality assurance. He has been imparting training to a number of organizations, entrepreneurs and individuals on various topics related to ISO terminologies and aerospace terminologies. This was just a brief introduction of our guest speaker today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Ashutosh Kumar Sena. I may request Mr. Ashutosh Kumar Sena now to please take over and start the session. Good afternoon to all participants present today. Thank you, Parva for introduction and organizing this webinar by TNV Academy. This is my session on the awareness on aerospace internal standard AS9100D. First session was an introduction to AS9100D. In second session, I explained clause 4, 5, 6 and 7. Third session was on clause 8 except clause A that is design and development of product and services. Today is the last session of this reach. I am going to explain clause 8.3 and rest of the clause 9. As in earlier slides, an additional requirement of aerospace standard, I have highlighted all the sub clauses with the yellow color. In fact, other than yellow color, requirement of aerospace standard is the same as ISO 9001 also. Therefore, I would like to explain the detail since it is a new requirement which has been added above the ISO 9001 standard. Let us start 8.3.3. It is a it continuation to design input, design and development input. Prior to design and development planning, organization must ensure that inputs are adequate. It should complete in all respect and ambiguous, non-conflicting, and all the input shall be documented and its results shall be reviewed. That is a part of design input. The organization can also consider as input other information such as benchmarking, external provider feedback, internally generated data, and in-service data received from the customer time to time during the operation. Now we'll come to design and development controls. Design and development control apply specific checks and balances to ensure that design activity are successful. This includes adequate control exercise and ensure the results are defined. Reviews are conducted at each stage of design and its output. Verification activities conducted to ensure output meet inputs. Validation activities ensure the resulting products and services meet the defined requirements. Problem faced during the design stage should be addressed. Documented information is retained. That is the minimum requirement for the design and development control process. Additional requirement is AS. What is the additional in AS? It includes authorization requirements. Means before pro progressing to the next stage of design activity must be authorized by the competent person. Always it is expelled in the document who is the person who can authorize the uh, who is authorized for the approval of the design. This is a must in aerospace if you are going for aerospace, but it is not spelled out in ISO 9001. During review of design and development, all concerned representatives 
shall be present and it may include production manufacturing testing qa regulator service provider or who is concerned with the uh, design or the maybe change of the design now we will go to 8.3 4.1 it is completely new new sub clause has been added here which is not there in iso 9000 and this this sub clause says that monitoring and measuring devices used for testing shall be controlled and defined and explained is this has been added in the clause 7.1.4 in aerospace same here also is applicable where we are going to uh, monitoring measuring devices we are using at the design stage the related to verification and validation shall be planned reviewed and documented as evidence test plan and resources being used test objective and conditions parameter to be recorded and acceptance criteria this should be spelled out, out at the design stage test procedure performance of test and recording of result this also the requirement in aerospace correctness of configuration standard of the product submitted for test acceptance criteria shall be met after completion of design and development the organization shall ensure that reports calculation test result can demonstrate to confirm the design of the product and service meet the specification requirement for all the operation conditional this is the requirement where the test result shall shall demonstrate the complete when you are going for design you should validate your product not an actual but it should validate with the test result what you are getting so or your design it will able to operate during the service design and development output now we will come to output already we have discussed about the we have i have explained about the input now output result of the designer work comes as the output it is very important that cross sector team has completed the review of output that ensures all the input provided by the customers either internal or external have been successfully addressed it is opportunity for the concerned department that they need to prepare for manufacturing and delivery of the product and services as spirit, uh, as it was required uh, same similar things were required in the wind production 8.1 design output shall exercise critical item here the uh, as you earlier i have told you in aerospace the certain definition has been added like critical item and key characteristic so in design stage this should be spelled out uh, it should be identified what are the critical item and what are the key characteristics of that critical item or any other item where it is required and action during the manufacturing and what are the action you are going to take during the manufacturing of those critical item how you are going to control this key characteristic shall be defined at the design stage a design stage in fact you will see in the drawing they will mention each and every drawing if any critical item is there they will mark with the critical item and what are the key characteristic uh, attribute of the dimension shall be controlled during the manufacturing this this is this comes at the design stage only out of output of the design and development shall be approved by the authorized person before release that is of course last time i have told you here every stage output or uh, shall be approved by the authorized person aerospace organization shall define the data required to allow the product to be identified manufactured verified used and maintained data can include those data you have to gather you have to keep it you have to document it data can include drawing part list specification design feature of the product the material the process manufacturing assembly handling packaging even you go to packaging what type of packaging should be there what type of preservation to periodical like normal preservation or what are the periodical preservation required or technical data when your repair scheme is given what are the technical data is required for repair or 
for the operating who is maintaining the product all should be specified at the design stage that's why any uh, aerospace product you will see all the manual are prepared where the what are the possibility of repair what is the condition of repair where repair can be done and in, in case of any malfunctioning what is the action to be taken all at this thing should be as a uh, customer supported a document we go 8.3.3 design and development changes this is nothing new in that but uh, the most important thing to understand when it comes to the requirement for controlling design and development changes in aerospace no such word is a minor change design change in any change original design team shall be involved doing the review of the change in design it does not mean original man who has done the design he should be involved but team person may change but actual original team or the group who was involved in the design that should be also involved during the any change you are taking place or you are proposing any changes the aerospace requirement include the notification to a customer prior to the implementation there is very important before uh, implementation you have to give the notification to the customer your link between the manufacturer and customer is always i told you the support should shall be throughout the life cycle so customer communication link always will be throughout the life cycle about those can affect the customer requirements design and development changes to be controlled in accordance with the configuration management process that is obvious document in documented information shall be retained related to design and development change as result of review that is a requirement for the as aerospace the authorization for who has changed it who has authorized the changes and what is the action taken to prevent adverse impact any adverse impact comes during the exploitation or during the use then what to be action to be taken by the uh, user that also shall be part of the manual now we will come to monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation that is now design is part of i have finished i have told in very briefly i will tell you this is design is a actually you will see it, it whatever requirement says there is meaning is very vast and lot of uh, complications it is the, the when you apply for uh, you use for design and development but briefly i uh, i have explained you about the what are the in aerospace what the additional requirement you have to meet when you go for certification of as 910g now as i told you last two clause that is 9 and 10 what is different from uh, iso 9000 i will i will try to explain you so monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation that is 9.1 The monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation is very important requirement in the AS9100 standard most of the organization measure and monitor hundred of different variables of the internal process or maybe their key process their sub clause required the organization shall determine most important variable in their business important but for AS to maintain the AS you have to select the certain most important uh, variables important variables and to which will affect your business environment the measurable variables which indicate process per performance in term of key performance indicator this is not not a new term uh, key performance indicator we have to fix for measurement of any process but uh, here mostly uh, standards say you have to identify the certain key process and for that you have to apply the key performance indicator that is called kpi the requirement is here that organization to identify kpi performance indicator for the vital processes kpi shall be analyzed evaluated at regular interval that is obvious other requirements is to retain document information as evidence of result this will be indicator of the effectiveness of the process necessary document and result shall be 
if the participants has any questions so they can now please ask by from sina sir or if you do not have any questions as of now so i would suggest that this particular webinar will be uploaded uh, as usually on our youtube channel known as tnb academy so in case you will have any sort of questions once you watch this particular webinar again so you can put those questions in the comment section of the video and so we will be really happy answering them